This video is sponsored by Zyro. An artist's journey, an epic quest that goes all the way from holding a pencil for the first time to becoming Kim Yoongi. Every artist goes through these seven levels, so let's see if you can find which level are you. What's up guys, Lucas here, I'm a concept artist and illustrator. If you're new to this channel, I make videos about how to improve as an artist. If that is something that you like, consider subscribing. Let's start with level one, the dabbler. If you ever held a pencil when you were a kid, you were a dabbler. This level one artist draws things like houses with mountains in the back, clouds and stick figures are their jam. This is the time when your mom's fridge was your gallery and you just didn't care if you were good or bad because drawing was just plain fun. I was a dabbler my whole childhood, holding crayons because they just didn't trust me with sharp pencils and just going nuts, drawing everything that I thought was cool. Airplanes, dragons, trees and whatever this thing is. I don't have many memories of that time, but I remember that I got into drawing because I saw my cousin, my elder cousin draw and I just wanted to do it also, it just seemed like a cool thing. But being a dabbler is not only for kids, if you were fortunate enough to be a dabbler and also old enough to use sharp objects without the supervision of an adult, then you might have found yourself decorating school notebooks with doodles when you were boarding math classes. Hopefully at some point somebody told you that your drawings were actually not that bad. If you were like me, an awkward kid with socializing problems, you held to that little piece of positive reinforcement like it was your lifeline and embrace drawing like it was your divine gift. In this stage, you start copying pictures of whatever you like. In my case, it was Dragon Ball Z characters, then Naruto, Batman, and just other cartoons like that. If you weren't a little nerdy otaku boy like myself, then you probably just started drawing things that were around you, for example, your dog, your trees outside your window, an embarrassing self-portrait that you still cringe every time you see. This stage took me several years from when I was around 12 years old until I was around 15. I was just drawing anime character after anime character, always messing the eyes and avoiding drawing hands like they were the spawn of the devil. I remember that at this stage it was all about how good I could copy another drawing. Of course drawings came out all wonky, uh, but it was just mostly for fun. What kept me going was just showing my drawings around to my classmates or family and just hearing that they liked them. Level 3. The Hobbyist Congratulations, you have advanced to level 3. You are now quite good at these copying pictures and maybe it is anime characters, cartoons or even portraits. If you're in a school, you might have become even the drawing kid in the class. Right around now is when you break the bad news to your parents. I'm sorry, mom, dad. I think I might be an artist. <gasps> <laughs> this was around 15 years old for me, I was going to have to choose a college soon and I knew that I liked art but I just didn't know how I could make a living out of it. I liked drawing anime characters and the only two professions that I knew did anything with drawing were graphic designers and architects. Not really my cup of tea. So I started participating in little contests in my school, you know, drawing contests or a comic strip or maybe a mural or something like that. Right around this time is when I started posting my work online. Back then it was DeviantArt, that was the place to be for artists online. Instagram didn't even exist back then. Yeah, I know, I'm not that young anymore. I saw that artists like Loish or Carla Ortiz, which I loved both of them, had websites, so I got myself one, and that is something that I recommend every artist to get, at least get yourname.com. When I did it back then it was kinda complicated, but fortunately now we have tools that make it much easier, like Zyro, the sponsors of this video. Zyro is a website builder that lets anyone create amazing websites and launch professional online stores with no coding or web design skills. That makes it perfect for artists, especially if you're the type that doesn't want to deal with super complex tech. Zyro is affordable, it is easy to use and it has 24-7 support. It is so easy to use that I, I went in there with zero knowledge on how to use it and I made a website in 8 minutes, yes, 8 minutes from the moment that I clicked on create a website to the moment that the website was public and ready for anybody to see. And it also loads super fast, nobody likes slow websites. If you have no idea how to design a website, don't worry, Zyro has more than a hundred beautifully designed templates for you to use and it is as simple as 
just drag and drop. Right now we are starting a new year. It is a great time to start that new project that has been in your mind for a long while. That is why Zyro has a new year deal for a limited time only. Click the link below or use my code Lucas to get an exclusive discount four months for free and a free domain for a year with any yearly plan. Thank you very much Zyro for sponsoring this video. Level four, The Apprentice. <laughs> Time to face it, you want to do art professionally. You're pretty good at this drawing thing, your family tells you, your friends tell you. Time to find out how you can turn your pretty drawings into money. You watch YouTube tutorials, you read books, you ask that family friend that works as a designer, how do I become a professional artist? Also, most probably, this is when you found me and this channel. You're trying to find answers everywhere. It is like there is this sea of nothingness that divides the place that you are right now that is just drawing pretty pictures to the place that you want to be being a professional artist. In your desperation, you go to Instagram and you see what all your favorite artists are doing. Yeah, some of them are copying pictures, but you already know how to do that. You want to learn more. You see that a lot of them are drawing original characters, they are inventing places from their imagination, creatures, scenes, everything. And you say, that's it. That is what I want to do. Create new things, not just copy pictures. How hard can it be? Let me tell you. When I tried to draw my first character, it broke my heart. It was like going back in time to the moment when I just didn't know how to draw anything. Now you're really worried, but how are you gonna make it as a professional artist if you cannot draw things that are not in front of you? I'm gonna tell you how. Enter level five, the enthusiast. I got here when I was 17 years old, I finally enrolled in an art school. In my case, because there was nothing like illustration or concept art in my country, I enrolled in the closest thing that I could find and that was digital animation. I couldn't wait, finally I was gonna study art properly, I was going to have people around me that would tell me what I was doing wrong. Is art school the only way of getting to level 5? No, not at all. What college gave me was a reason to take art seriously, that means no more fooling around, not drawing just for drawing's sake, but I started to consciously practice to get better. Imagine it like, instead of playing a basketball match with your friends just for fun, you go and start shooting hoops one after another, practicing your agility, your endurance, all with the specific purpose of improving your weak points. This is the biggest barrier for people that want to become artists. Either you don't know that this is what you have to do, or you just hear it and you don't want to do it. These are the five things that you have to practice individually. Construction or perspective, values, color, anatomy and composition. This is it. This is the big door, the obstacle to become a professional. Don't give up, it is gonna take time, I would say at least 8 hours a week for a year is a good number to shoot for. I spent my whole university here trying desperately to get better. It felt like a hit or miss period where sometimes paintings would be much better than what I usually was able to do and sometimes they were just horrible. But at least I knew that I was in the right path and that I had people around me that wanted to go in the same direction. Here having a community really helped me to move forward. But the sooner that you can get that community the better. If I would be doing this nowadays I think that I would have joined things like Discord groups groups, Facebook groups, and other communities that would just propel me forward, but unfortunately there was not much of this back then. The most important factor in this step is perseverance. It is the hardest part of learning how to draw. But if you can go through this, if you can go through these, each of these fundamentals individually and break them apart, you're gonna accomplish it. You're gonna be a level 6, an adept. Now we're talking. Congratulations, you are officially a pro artist. What does it mean to be a level six? Well, your fundamentals are solid for starters and you can draw anything that you want proficiently. You can draw characters, creatures, environments, portraits, props. You can draw from imagination, although any adept will tell you that always using reference is better. This is a good moment to tell you that these levels are not fixed, of course, and that sometimes you will spend months or even years in the transition between these levels. Level 6 is when art gets really fun again. It is like you spent all of these years learning how to speak a language, in this case drawing, and now you can finally start speaking it. You can discover what your real style is, what your interests are, and what makes you an artist. 
I became an adept around 24 or 26 years old when I was hired in a very small studio back in Costa Rica to design characters and creatures for a little online game. I had so much fun being able to finally create and to finally paint things as I saw them in my mind. This is really something to look forward to. Before this, I was all the time wondering if I was good enough to make it. But I can promise, if you work on those skills, you are going to make it. Reaching this is a proof that drawing is 20% talent and 80% practice. So this is great, right? If you're here, you might be wondering, what is next? What can possibly be better? Level 7. The Master The difference between an adept and a master is no longer what you can draw and what you cannot, it is all about what you decide to draw. I like the language analogy because it is a very close thing to what I mean. An adept, a level 6, can speak the language. Being a master is all about what you say and how eloquently you express yourself. Small things, very small things like the curve of a pose on a character, the simplification of a tree in a background, or how you can play with colors to trick the mind of your viewers. Being a master is true freedom with your craft. I am not there yet. I am 29 years old now and I have been enjoying being an adept for around four or five years now. And I think that I am many, many years and many drawings away from becoming a master. But I will keep enjoying the journey knowing that every painting gets me one step closer. Doesn't matter if you're a dabbler or an adept, remember, the journey is long. So long that it is easy to lose sometimes sight of the goal. Every time you feel lost, just grab a pencil and continue moving forward. Thank you very much, guys, for watching this video till the end. If you want to see more of art content, don't forget to subscribe and also leave a comment. Tell me if this video resonated with you and where are you in this journey? What is your level? This was Lucas and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.